OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome everyone. We're so excited to be with you virtually and in person uh, to the California EL Civics Exchange, Accessible Instructional Materials for English Learners. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, this first day of the TDLS. And uh, my name is Lori Howard with CASAS. I'm here today with uh, Portia LaFerla at CASAS and Anthony Burek also at OTAN. And he's with you there in person. Shall we go to the next slide? This is our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to do an overview of the EL Civics Exchange, then an introduction to the EL Civics Exchange website. We're going to tell you how to submit instructional materials. Um, and uh, the uh, rubric criteria you need to follow in order to, to submit appropriate materials how to make your materials accessible, and how to um, give them Creative Commons attribution. We're also gonna talk a little bit about resources, and then we'll have time for your questions and then a summary of what we've done today. Uh, Portia or Anthony, anything else to add to the agenda? No, I think that's it, Lori. So let's go to our objectives on the next slide. Thank you. So by the end of this session, you'll be able to identify the organization of the EL Civics Exchange website and identify the process of accessing and submitting instructional materials. And we hope you will both access and submit materials. Next slide. So now it's time for the overview and Portia is going to do the overview for us today. Thank you, Portia. Thank you, Laurie. So let's start with what the EL Civics Exchange is. It's a repository for original materials that have been created by the California We Owe It To agencies. And through this site, we're offering a repository for all of these great materials that agencies have been creating. And anybody can go to the, to the site and use these materials, anybody, anywhere. But only California We Owe It To agencies can submit them. And this has been a joint collaborative process between CASAS and OTAN, and it was funded by the Department of Ed. Next slide. So the EL Civics, the ability to share EL Civics materials has been long requested by agencies. It takes a long time to create good and quality instruction material, instructional materials. And people wanted the ability to borrow and share so that they don't have to invent them every single time. In the past, we weren't able to do that because we didn't have a method for vetting and posting the materials. Um, we do believe that agencies should have um, access to quality materials. And so now we have a system that will make them available to all. And we are only able to do that with the help of the CDE and in collaboration between CASAS and OTAN. And through the submission process, there are two kinds of evaluation that will happen. First, CASAS is going to evaluate the materials for the quality of the content, and then OTAN is going to check to make sure that everything that gets posted to the site is accessible to all. And we hope that whether or not you use the materials um, as you check them out, you'll use them at least for inspiration. Maybe you'll find um, other approaches that you hadn't thought about, and maybe you'll vary your instruction and create better materials for your own students. But we do hope that as you create materials, you will uh, consider submitting them to the exchange and making them available to your colleagues, as many generous, um, uh, many of our generous schools have already done. And next slide. So this site is only for instructional materials that teach EL Civics content to English language learners. And it is all related to the California EL Civics Civic Objectives and the Language and Learning Objectives. So they should match whatever you're doing for your co-ops. And the materials that you can contribute, when people contribute to these materials, they could be for all of a unit, all 30 hours of instruction, or they might just be practice for one task. That's up to the submitter. You can only submit materials and you can only access materials on the site 
there are no assessments posted because in California, these tests are high stakes and people earn payment points for them. So we can't put them out on the internet where anybody can view them. And another caveat is that the materials must be original and not copyrighted. And then they need to be licensed by Creative Commons. And um, I think Anthony's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, more about that later on, but it tells us how the user can, um, whether the user can adapt the materials and give credit or um, what the conditions for use are. And then the other um, criteria is that the materials have to be 508 compliant so that they're accessible. And a lot of you are already making your materials accessible, but some of you are not as familiar with that. Margaret and I will be doing another session tomorrow and give you some pointers on how to do that. Um, and the next slide, Anthony, thank you. If you submit the materials, they're going to go through a two-step review process. So first, CASAS is going to use a rubric, which I'll be showing you later. And that rubric is for the quality of the instructional materials. So we'll look at the presentation and the practice, how the co-op is taught, and whether or not you've licensed it with Creative Commons. And then after that, the materials go to OTAN, and OTAN will evaluate them through an accessibility check to make sure that that's OK. Um, when you submit materials, you give us an email. And so we can use that to contact you in case there are any issues with content or accessibility that we need to help you remediate. Once the materials pass both those checks, they become available to everybody on the EL Civics website. Um, any questions about that part of it before I turn it over to Lori? Or do we have any online questions? Also? No. Next slide. I'll it over to you, Laurie. Thank you. So now we're going to give you an introduction to the website. Um, and we're going to do this in a static way, just showing you some slides. But then Anthony is going to take you to the actual website. So, Anthony, next slide, please. So, this is what if you log on to elcivics.otan.us, you will enter this page. And it starts with a description of uh, what the EL Civics Exchange is. And on the left-hand side, you have a, a menu of um, the different uh, topic areas for co-ops. Next slide. When you scroll down a little bit, you see those topic areas in visual format. And you can see the, here that um, we have uh, two active materials in community resources, five in health, three in employment, one in government and law, and three in workforce training. We're missing some in consumer economics and transition, and we're going to be asking you later to um, uh, perhaps submit in those areas. But we do have uh, various materials ready for you to access. Next slide. And these are the materials, and you can see not only the co-op, um, number that you're familiar with and the tasks and the levels, but the school that submitted them. So we're so pleased and proud of these schools who took the time to submit their materials to be available to everyone in the state and beyond the state, uh, people who are interested in uh, teaching uh, the, either the co-ops or these EL civics topics. So we have 14 different materials uh, ready for you. Um, some of them are teacher's guides. Most of them are student materials ready for you to use. Next slide. And we just wanna tell you how the EL Civics Exchange has been used. You can see that um, from December through January for a, a little bit more than a month, there were 309 downloads of materials. Um, that's sort of what's happening now, but you can see that in September, um, at the beginning of the school year, there were a lot more, almost 200 more uh, uh, downloads of materials. So we've had a lot of people downloading the materials. In total, 300, uh, almost 4,000 total downloads since we opened it up in uh, March of 22 uh, through the end of January. And then we've had uh, over the year and a little bit, uh, almost 5,000 visits and 1,000 unique visitors. So those people who are coming to the site are coming back again, hopefully because they've found the materials useful to them. And we hope you'll be one of these statistics soon if you haven't already. Next slide. 
So your turn, uh, Anthony. Now Anthony is going to show you the live site. Okay, thank you, Lori and Portia. So I'm going to escape out of our PowerPoint. And one second, Zoom is in the way. Okay, so I want to um, show people kind of a live view of the EL Civics Exchange. Again, the address is elcivics.otan.us. And when you type that in, you're going to come to our main um, homepage for the EL Civics Exchange. As Lori said, at the very top of the page, you'll get kind of an introduction to the exchange, a little bit of information about the materials, how they are organized, and then you can start your search. So um, I think one of the things that we mentioned is that um, anybody can come to the exchange site and access the materials. So whether you're in California, if you're outside of California, um, if you're currently working as the EL Exchange, EL Civics Exchange person at your agency, if you're assisting with EL Civics at your agency, anybody can come to the site and access the materials. Okay. So we'll um, we'll show you how that how that works. As Lori mentioned here on the left hand side of the screen, uh, let me click into the screen here. On the left hand, and it's not okay. So let me move here. On the left hand side of the screen. We have this menu where you can see the um, the seven categories um, which are used to organize the co-ops. So if you're doing EL Civics at your agency, you should be uh, pretty familiar with the categories here. Um, in other states, um, you may have the same kind of similar, you may have a similar list of categories and maybe slightly different, but hopefully the topics will sort of match up with what you're doing in your state. Um, a little bit later, we're going to talk about how to submit materials to the exchange, and your starting point will be the blue button that you see here that says begin the instructional materials submission process. Um, again, um, Lori and um, Portia are going to talk about that in a little bit. So, again, as you're scrolling down the page, you'll see those categories again in tile format. And you're able to click on any of the tiles in order to see, to see the active materials within that category. We scroll down a little bit more. Back on the left hand side of the um, screen, you'll see actually a search, um, kind of our search feature here. So you're able to search by levels. Um, you can also do a keyword search as well. So if you're looking for like a particular topic, like DMV or employment, you can also search by that. Um, and then actually, if you know, you can check and see if, um, if the civic objective or the co-op number is included in the exchange so far. So if you have a specific number, you can also type that in and do a search for that. Um, and then you can, um, these boxes are clickable, so you can go back and forth between different levels, see what might be available on the exchange as well. So I think that's pretty much the live view of the homepage here. Are there any questions so far? <coughs> any questions online? Do we have any questions online? Okay. Okay. So I think what we wanted to do next, let me go back to the presentation, is let's go back to the right slide. Okay. So now um, we wanted you to give you a few minutes um, to do kind of search the site on your own. Um, for our, uh, Lori and Portia are available for our online um, participants, and I'll be here in the room for a few minutes. So maybe we'll give you about five minutes or so just to kind of search, explore around the site, um, see if you find a material that might be of interest to you or something that you're currently working on at your agency and see um, what kinds of materials um, folks have submitted for the co-ops, okay? So we'll give people about five minutes to do a little searching on their own. So um, we have a few questions here on the screen, um, or maybe people can just give us sort of their general impressions of the exchange so far. Any comments, questions, ideas, suggestions? I, I found it really easy to use. I remember looking at ELC years, many years back and kind of was out of the, the loop from it. So looking at this and what's available, I even like that it says zero available on some of them because I know it still exists. Correct. But the material was very easy to click quickly through it. Okay. Did did online folks hear that from Lilia? 
it was a little muffled for me. Okay, so Lilia was saying that um, it looks like it's pretty easy to navigate around the site and um, find the materials that are available on the exchange. Thank you. Okay, other, other questions or anybody online, if you wanna share your impressions as well. I just wanted to ask again, I think I heard you say that we could use a portion of it. It's not, we don't have to sign up for the whole packet, for example, if there's just one exercise that supports a task that we would like to use. Is that true? It's not all or nothing. Right. Yeah, Lynn. So if you find a material on the exchange, it's it's up to you whatever portion of it you would like to use. If you'd like to use the whole thing, that's fine. If you want to um, use just the portion that would apply to what you're um, doing at your agency, you can do that as well. So really, the, you can use the materials as much or as little as you would like. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. And that's true for submission, too. Maybe you just have one really good, um, uh, you have curriculum, really good curriculum for creating a job application. And that's the only thing you want to submit. You can also submit portions of curriculum. You do not have to submit an entire unit of instruction. And just to say, and we're going to talk about this later, but since they're all Creative Commons licensed, um, the Creative Commons license allows you to adjust and adapt, you know, take a piece of it. And then just if you're, if you're, you know, handing it out or printing it out, that you would just, uh, you know, show that, uh, give credit to the agency who, who originally developed it if you make any changes to it. Other, yeah, Ryan, please. Yeah, I would like that uh, you added the resources tab to help out with the uh, accessibility instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not hearing that, Anthony. Okay. So Ryan said he really liked the resources tab um, that has more information about accessibility in particular. Um, but some of the other things that are related to the website. And we'll talk about the resources tab in a little bit as well. Okay, so why don't we um, why don't we continue? Um, we're going to move on to um, talking about how to actually submit materials to the exchange. Let me move to the slides. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to take you to a live submission in a moment. Um, but uh, I just want to cover a couple of things beforehand. Um, well, yeah, let's let's go to the site. So, Anthony, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. All good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here we are on the um, on the EL Civics website. And um, there's all of this information here that you should definitely read through. And then when you go to submit, you're going to use this button that says begin the instructional material submission process. I have to go through a back door because um, I have more access than you do. But anyway, you come to this page and there are a few things here that are super important. So you really need to read through this information. Um, remember that only California WIOA 2 agencies can submit materials. Um, and so in order to submit, you have to create a password. You do not need a password to use the materials. You only need the password to submit. And we use that to make sure that you're a part of a WIOA 2 agency. And also so that we can contact you in case we have any questions or in case there are any issues with the materials. Um, before you start, you should read the terms of licensing requirements. And um, it's directly here. It tells us um, just the same things that we covered earlier, that you can only submit um, non-copyrighted materials. They must be original. Um, only we owe two agencies can submit them. Um, we ask that you submit them in um, Microsoft Word format or PowerPoint or something like that because of accessibility issues. That's just recommended. We may be able to deal with other formats, but it is recommended and we'll talk about that. It has a lot to do with the Microsoft accessibility tools that make it much easier to submit accessible resources. Um, and 
um, also, you need to discuss this with your administrator. Make sure that you have permission to submit before you do that. And then the other um, issue is about making sure that you have licensed your materials under Creative Commons, and there'll be more to come on that. I know when we say license under Creative Commons, if you haven't done that before, it might sound kind of daunting, but it's a very, very simple process. And then we're going to go back to the submission page. Um, so again, make sure that you have discussed it with your um, with your um, administrator and have permission. When you submit the materials, we ask that you submit them in leveled packets and not sheet by sheet because it's just cumbersome for you to upload and it's cumbersome for us to review and for the user to use. So I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like. In this one, we have um, 48.1 submitted. And if you look at the documents here, there are student practice packets. They have submitted it two tasks at a time in a student practice packet. You might, you might do that differently. You might submit task one student packet, task two student packet, but it's not sheet by sheet. They are in packets. And that just makes it easier for everybody to use. Okay. And then it gives um, desired formats. And they're here. Notice you can use images. And the document size should not be any larger than 110 megabytes. If these things do not seem possible, you have some kind of an exception, you can run it by us or run it by OTAN. Sometimes we can accommodate, um, accommodate differences in um, file types and file sizes. And then we're going to continue to the submission page. Um, did I, I don't think I talked about the scoring rubric, right? I'm going to go to resources here, and there is a scoring rubric. Just have to find it. I'm going to get it here. Sorry about that. I think I right there it. under submitting. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Uh, in this one, right? Yes. I think. There it is. Sorry about that. That's what I skipped. I think it's not going to share properly, though. Let me just share that. That's why I gave you the PowerPoint, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, the criteria that is used um, to evaluate the materials. Um, and there are uh, several areas, including content and presentation. Um, and practice organization. So we're going to look at all of those things. Um, if these are student materials, uh, do they have enough practice? Do they have uh, vocabulary at the right level? If the, their teacher materials, is there enough information for the teacher to be able to use the materials? And if there are no teacher materials, is there enough information for the student to be able to know how to use them? Um, are they well organized? Are there clear objectives? Um, and on the page, for example, design and format, um, is the page properly formatted for the student level? So is there enough white space? If you're asking them to answer questions, is there um, space for them to do that? You can look at the font size. Nothing should be smaller than a 12-point font. Um, and then also just to make sure that the materials are properly credited to the agency in the footer or the header and that the Creative Commons licensing is there. And so in all of these criteria, it's within the submission process, the materials have to pass the majority of those things. Now I'll go back to the site. I'm sorry for skipping around there. So then when we get to the materials submission, I'm gonna click on that button. And this is the form that you're going to fill out. It's a two page form and it starts with your name, your agency, and the fiscal year in which the materials were created. I'm going to put 2022. We hope that you'll be willing to be that you're willing to be contacted by other agencies in case they have questions about your assessments. And you must agree to the terms of licensing and conditions. And then this is it, this is all automatic. If you select your co-op number, this system will fill in the competency area and the civic objective. So for example, I'm going to use 47.1. Notice there's a drop down. They're all there. You don't even have to invent them. They're right there. And when I enter that, I get, well, that's not the right one. <laughs> I got to get the right one. Uh, there it is. 
I get community resources, and it's about internet safety. For the co-op task titles and all of the information that we're putting in here, it's to help with search. So um, in this case, um, the example, it says task one, interpret job openings, task two, role play a job interview. In this case, I'm going to submit materials for 47.1, and I'm going to put them in for task one. And if I look that up in the co-op system, the name, that task is identify, identify internet um, uses. And that's just the task title. If you look at your EL Civics materials, it's there. You don't have to create that. And then in this case, eventually I'm going to upload materials for all levels, not now, but eventually. And my materials are written, so I'll check written. And I'm going to do a student packet. And my materials have print and visuals. If there's something that I want to tell the reviewer, I can put that information in this box and that material will go, that information will go through to the reviewer. So once I've completed the form, I hit save and continue. And now you can see all that information populates here. So it's me, it's the year, my co-op is here, my co-op task is here. And now I'm gonna add the materials. So it gives you very clear instructions about how you are going to, um, how you are going to label the materials. In this case, we want the co-op number, the level or levels, the task number, and the type of material such as student practice packet. And notice everything is um, separated by commas. So in this case, my materials are going to be for um, 47.1, and it's a beginning low, beginning high, task one, student packet. And then my file is going to be named in the same way. Notice here, material file should match. And this time, instead of using commas, we're going to use underscores. And so then I'm gonna choose my file. And here it is labeled in the same way with the underscores and I'm gonna upload it. And if I come here, there's my material. If later on I want to delete it, I can delete it here. And if I have like four or five files and I don't like the order of the file because the way that you order them here is how they're going to appear, I can use this to drag them to a different order before submitting. Once I'm happy with my materials, I will submit the materials for review. Oh, I'm sorry, I can keep adding materials. I only put this one task one here, but if I wanted to put all the tasks, all the levels, I would just keep adding materials until I had all of them. And then I would I would submit material for review. Before and can I just say, we'd like you to add them all at once, or if you do uh, wanna wait and add more later, let us know so we can give you an edit version so they can all be in one place. It's easier for people to access it if it's all in one place. Yes, it's best to upload them all before you hit submit material for review. Any questions before I submit my materials for review? No, no. that one was just for thank you. Okay, okay, thanks. No, we're, we're good, Portia, thank you. All right, there they go. So that's been submitted and now it's waiting for CASAS review. And after that, it will go to OTAN review. So Portia, the question is how long does that process usually take? Um, it depends on how hard they are to review. <laughs> Some of them are really great and they fly through and others need a little bit of remediating. So um, we don't sit on them, but some are harder to review than others. And and we are given we are sent an email as soon as you submit. We are sent an email that it's there. So we will try to look at it within the next couple of days and and then review it as soon as we can. And, and if it's one file, that's very different from ten or twelve files. So yes, right. Okay. Thank you, Portia. Okay. Should I stop sharing, Anthony? You got to go back. Sure. Yeah. Other questions about um, the submission? process. Okay. All right, let's go back to 
Uh, the slides. Um, yeah, this is this was the river criteria that Portia showed us already. And this is also available um, on the resources under the resources tab on the exchange. We went live. Oh, um, that last point was just make sure the first thing is to make sure if you are going to submit materials that you do create an account on the exchange. So again, just to be clear, anybody can come to the exchange and access the materials that are already there. You don't need to create an account for that purpose. Mm -hmm. If you do want to submit materials, though, you do need to create your account first, and then you'll be able to go ahead and begin submitting. Okay. Okay. So let's talk a minute or two about um, a couple of the criteria that Lori and um, Portia mentioned earlier. One is about accessibility, and then the second question is about licensing. Okay. So first, we're going to talk about accessibility. Um, so we know that um, a lot of folks still are learning about how to make uh, materials accessible, um, in this case for the EL Civics Exchange, but also actually just in general for any kind of materials that you create um, for student use at your agency, uh, materials that you uh, create for your staff as well, for, for your colleagues too. So really the goal is for uh, all of us to begin making our materials accessible. Um, so on the OTAN website, we actually have a page devoted to accessibility resources. So we encourage folks to check that out. Um, some of the materials that we have at the very beginning of the page are some guides to how to begin to make your materials accessible. Some, what are some of the things that you have to consider if you're creating a, a Microsoft Word document? What are some of the things that you have to consider if you're making a Microsoft PowerPoint? All right. And so our guides cover sort of the big topics that you need to consider when you're starting to create those materials. And as Lori and Portia mentioned earlier, um, one of our sessions tomorrow actually is devoted to how to begin to make your materials accessible. Um, so that would be a good session to attend if you're interested in learning more about that. But otherwise, on the OTAN website, we do have a lot of resources about accessibility. Um, it's a very big topic. Um, some people are a little bit uh, are a little bit daunted by the <laughs> by the fact that they would like to make their access materials accessible, but it seems very like a very big hill to climb. So, um, but sort of step by step, we really both on the CASAS end and on the OTAN end, we really want to help you um, get started with getting your materials accessible. Um, we tend to find that actually, rather than going back to older materials and trying to make them accessible because they weren't originally made accessible, um, that's a little bit more difficult than starting from scratch. So think about some of the new co-ops that you're using at your agency, maybe this year, and with the, with the new materials that you're developing, start from scratch and build those uh, materials accessible right from the beginning. That's going to be a lot easier when it comes to the review process to make sure that they're actually accessible and ready to put on the exchange. Okay. But otherwise, on the O10 website, we do have a lot of um, resources for you to take a look at that cover many different accessibility topics. Oh, um, any questions about, about accessibility, either online or in the room? Any questions so far about that? Okay. Okay, the other, um, the other criteria to, um, to be aware of when submitting materials to the exchange has to do with licensing your materials. So um, we know that, um, you know, over the years, agencies have been sharing materials sort of back and forth with, with one another, um, but we want to make that process more official. And one of the ways to do that is to actually license your materials. Um, we follow the licensing format of Creative Commons. So if you're familiar with the organization Creative Commons, they have a very robust licensing um, process, a licensing framework. So a couple of things about licensing. Really, we want to be able for you all to share your materials with other agencies across the state and across the U.S. as well. Um, and so the way to do that is to license the materials. So basically, it, the license gives other people the permission 
to use the materials that they find on the, on the exchange and sort of make them their own back at their agency. Okay. Um, so um, as the slide shows, really what we're trying to do is make these resources available for you to use, but with the understanding about sort of how to use them based on the license. That's what the Creative Commons licensing is for. Um, again, as we've been talking about, the materials that you create at your agency are original materials. So you're not using copyrighted materials. You're not like photocopying pages from textbooks and including them in the packets, um, things like that. So we're really, we're really, um, the, it's important for you um, at your agency to be creating original materials. Okay. And that's not to say that you can't use things that you find online, but there are ways to make those things. Um, there are ways to make those things um, understood that, you know, you're using them in the right way. Okay. So for example, like if you go to a, if you go to a picture sharing site, like Pixabay or Pexels, for example, those sites, it's very clear about how you can use those pictures, right? And very often the creators of those photos have given you the permission to use them in your material. Sometimes you have to credit the, the photographer, for example. But it's very clear how you can use those materials in your um, creation and your materials back at your agency. Okay, so we're really hoping for no more um, copyrighted materials showing up in EL Civics materials. That's the goal, um, and hopefully, you know, um, with with the understanding about how to properly license materials. Okay, um, this is the license that we use from Creative Commons. So it's CC by NCSA. So basically the different components um, of this license give you the ability to use the materials that you find on the exchange. Um, you can make some changes to them. You can't um, turn them into commercial materials, right? So nobody's getting rich off of EO Civics, okay? Um, and you wanna make sure that you give credit to the original creator, right? So if I work at, um, if I work at Chula Vista, if I, if I work for Sweetwater Adult, and I'm using materials from my friends at Torrance Adult. So when I create my Sweetwater materials, I'm giving credit to Torrance Adult because that's where I found the original creation, okay? I'm taking it and sort of remixing it for my own use, but I wanna give the original uh, credit back to Torrance because they were the ones who first created the materials and now I'm using them um, for, at my agency in my own sort of particular way, okay? And so basically what we're what we're asking you to do is to add this particular license to your uh, materials that you create. Basically, all you have to do is copy that license, that graphic that you see, make sure that it's added to your materials. Um, and it's clear that um, this is the license for these uh, materials um, uh, specifically. All right. Um, we do have some, oh, well, okay. We do have some um, additional resources that you can take a look at that give you more information about the licensing process, what it means, um, making sure you're not using copyrighted materials, so on and so on. And um, I will say, I forgot to say at the beginning, um, we can make these slides available to you when we're, we'll put the link to in the chat and you can take a look at them at your leisure. Okay. Portia, Lori, any, any questions or any, any additional comments? Uh, just a little comment on accessibility and making accessible documents. Um, it It's kind of like many other things. When you first start out, it's like when you're learning a, a musical instrument. The beginning is really hard, and then it gets easier. But um, there are little things that you can learn pretty easily, and then it's kind of like a puzzle, and it's kind of fun. So um, I, uh, Margaret Teske and I are going to be showing how to do that through Word and PowerPoint tomorrow at 9.50. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of documents side by side, one that's accessible and one that's not, and what I did to make that document accessible, because that's what helped me the most is when somebody showed me. So um, if you're interested, it is a lot. It's what we should all be doing with all our documents. We'll try to demystify some of it and kind of hopefully you'll think it's fun too in the end. And, um, you know, it's important for our students as well as our fellow teachers that the materials are accessible, that people who have 
hearing impairment or visual impairment can access our materials. And so we making them accessible is very important. Um, and we're here to help you also, as Anthony said, creating them from the beginning using, using an accessible template really helps. So I'm, we're showing you right here, the EL Civics Exchange resources that you can um, access by that little uh, resources label up at the top of the page here. And if you press on that, you'll get to this page. And one of the things that we um, uh, developed, or I should say OTAN developed, uh, is it here? I'm not sure. It's There is a like a 10 point accessibility. Oh, I think it's under the, you can't see it, but it says creating accessible materials, the third large um, heading there. There is a document that Penny Pearson and Pearson and, um, and David Espinosa created 10 things to think about to create accessible documents. I'm sure um, Portia will be sharing that tomorrow at her session. And it, it's just 10 things that you go, oh, okay, I can do that. Uh, one of them is, you know, not using tables. Uh, so many of us teachers think tables are so easy to use and we put in a table and we um, make a list in a table and that's not accessible. So we want to encourage you not to do that. So something as simple as that, starting out by not using tables, um, will really help the accessibility of your document. So again, on, um, Anthony showed you accessibility resources here on the exchange. You have a, a lot of different resources getting started, submitting the instructional materials, the rubric is here, and then some documents about creating accessible materials. Next slide. Um, and actually, Laurie, if I could, so just back sure. to our key, our um, our keynote um, speaker this morning, Dr. Betters, who was basically talking about equity, right? And so we know that some of our students will need um, support in different ways. And as Laurie and Portia have been pointing out, right, for those folks who may have visual impairments or whatever or other um, other impairments, so really, you know, we're developing the materials in that spirit. We want to make sure that everybody is able to access our materials. And we often find that sometimes when we do it for some people, we do it for everybody. So that's really the goal um, with the making the materials accessible and really addressing that equity issue. So I just wanted to point that out. And we don't wanna have to ask people, you know, some people say, well, none of my students have visual impairment, but we don't really know that. So, and we don't, people aren't required to tell us that they have impairments. And so that's why we want to make them accessible. I also want to point out that all of the materials you're creating, you're being paid through WIOA two funds and federal funding. And so, um, it, so these materials that you're creating at your sites really belong to the public domain because they're funded through federal funds. So we hope that you'll feel generous to um, share them uh, because they were funded through federal funds. And we ask that you ask permission of your agency just so that they know you're doing it, but not that um, you know the materials necessarily belong to the agency. They really belong to the state of California and because they're uh, funded through these funds, funneled through the state of California. Next slide. So we do want you to submit. We're very uh, anxious for you to submit. Um, so um, I've made this list here of the most used co-ops. We, we want to at least have um, the most used co-ops there for everyone to use because it impacts most agencies. Um, so we have all of these uh, are currently represented except for uh, the most used 1.6 and 52.2. If you happen to have materials or are about to develop materials in 1.6 or 52.2, we're really anxious to get materials in those areas um, so that we can have something in community resources and something in transition. Um, and so even if you're not creating them new, if you have them and you think they, uh, they could be made accessible, we'd like to help you do that uh, because we want to fill and have all the materials that are most used represented and then any other ones that people want to submit. So the <coughs> reason um, to do this is to share your great materials with your colleagues. I know we know you've worked hard on them and uh, we want others to uh, uh, benefit from your hard work. Uh, we thank all of you, like Torrance Ryan is there. Torrance Adult School has been very generous in what they've shared. 
um, just before the EX Civics Exchange was there, but also now that it, that it is there and we would love to have everyone's materials there. Um, you're contributing to the field. And um, as you develop your new materials, we hope you'll look to see what has been approved online. So you'll, that you'll look at the exchange and see the good model that we have there. One of the reasons to have the um, EL Civics Exchange is to show a model of good print materials. Um, and then um, you can also look at the rubric to see what the material should include. So um, this is a good model of good lesson planning, for example. And that again, we want you to make your materials accessible for the benefit of your students and your fellow teachers. <laughs> and we are here to help you. So we will help you with support and a review and advice about making it accessible, about Creative Commons and about your content. So we ask you to submit your instruction materials uh, at elcivics.o10.us. You might want to run it by one of us first. Um, Portia and I and Margaret Teske do the uh, content review, and then it gets moved on to O10 for the Accessibility and Creative Commons review. Um, so if you have content questions, you want to show it to us first before you actually upload it, we'd be happy to look at it. And remember, it's California We Owe It to agencies only who can submit. Uh, any questions about that? <laughs> Next slide. So um, we'd love your feedback. Um, would anybody like to share either on chat or in the room what your reaction to the Yale Civics Exchange and if you plan to um, access or submit materials and what assistance or training you might need? Anthony, can you call on people there in the room? Does anybody have any, um, any feedback for us? This is new, right? This is like recently this year, uh, or when was it produced? Because it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is about when the when the exchange actually began. So it actually, it, yeah, it actually began in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, it started in um, July, 2021. I believe we actually had a, we had a session at Casa Summer Institute that year online. Um, so it's actually, we're coming up on two years okay. of the exchange. Okay, but this is like the first, well, I mean, I mean, it was, assuming it was already up public, but this is the first time that all the schools are kind of finding out about it so that they can put some. So, well, um, actually, Lori and Portia, do you want to talk about, because um, I know in your in your network meetings, you've been talking about the exchange. What have, what have you been telling folks in the, in the network meetings over the year? Over yeah, the I mean, we, we've been encouraging them. I think during the pandemic, it was an especially difficult time for people to find time to do this because right. they were so burdened with other things. So I think it's been a slow start because of the pandemic. But um, as, as you say, we're encouraging people as they create new materials, they should be making them accessible anyways. And so if they're doing that, um, they might as well be submitting. And as I said, we're here to help you do that. A number of agencies are writing new co-ops or revising co-ops. So we are encouraging them to, as they develop these new materials to do it. You know, we're all very busy, um, but we hope you'll take the time to, to do this and we can assist you. So. If you have materials, contact us and, and we'll help you. Yeah, sure. we've really gone out looking for curriculum for the most used co-ops. And we're just hoping that as that, that this will kind of be like the snowball rolling down the hill and that as people find things, they'll be more willing to submit things because we know there are things out there that we don't know anything about. And we would love to find out about them and have you submit them. Right. Okay, so just to clarify, we can submit materials that are rather wrong and get approved and then O10 will help us make them accessible. Okay. So so <laughs> folks online, so the uh the Ryan's question was um they you know they can submit the, the materials as is, you know, they may have some errors, um, but once they're submitted, um what does what will cost us an O10 do, do in terms of helping to correct those errors, sort of what's the what's the review process? How do we go about working with agencies when materials come um, in for submission? So do you mean errors? 
Uh, what kind of errors are you talking about, Ryan? Talking about errors, I'm talking about um, accessibility. Yeah. So making it 508 compliant. I didn't Lord. hear that. I'm sorry. He, he wants to know about um, if the materials are not completely accessible, will OTAN or CASAS take care of that? We would prefer that you did it, <laughs> but we, we will, especially if it's one of the most, the necessary ones, the ones that we want, you know, that, that are the most used, we'll, we'll, we will help you do that. And we can certainly give you advice on it. I mean, I think the best, if you have questions, Ryan, if you can, you know, let's send the materials to us, you know, before you actually go through the submission process and, and let's look at how accessible they are. And, you know, well, one thing is, do you know how to run a, an accessibility checker? That's one of the things I think Portia is going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, but that would be to see, you know, if it's, if it's onerous, you know, then we might, not, it might be too much for us to take on. But if it's, close to being accessible, you know, we could help you with that. Yeah, I would say you're right, Lori. So oftentimes the issue is folks don't even know how to get started to check the materials to for accessibility, where the, where the accessibility errors may lie. So we certainly, yeah, we the goal is to get as many materials onto the exchange as possible. So whether it's CASAS helping out and or OTAN helping out, to make them um, accessible, make sure they're licensed properly, cost is doing their content review. We're invested in this process to get things onto the exchange. So wherever the, not errors, wherever the issues may lie, um, we wanna help um, um, you know, take a look at that and remediate to the extent that we can. So Barry, question. Yeah. Hi, Lori, Barry here. Um, I know that um, you know, LA Unified Adult has been making, you know, EL Civics materials, uh, you know, quite a lot over the last several years, but I have no way of knowing really, like if we, if people in, you know, central office have been contributing anything uh, to the exchange. I mean, would you know off the top of your head, has there been cooperation and participation with any particular school district? Or, I mean, maybe I, all I have to do is, you know, send an email to somebody and say, hey, you really should be involved in doing this. Uh, or we Barry, thank you. We have been in touch with LAUSD, um, and last year um, LAUSD submitted some materials. I think in it was it in employment. It's one of the ones that was listed there. Um, and right now, uh, LAUSD is in the process of writing some new materials um, on social and emotional learning, and we're hoping that because they're creating these new materials, that they're going to be submitting them to the um, to the exchange. So, so I don't really have to do anything. You guys have it under control. You're already well, certainly. If you have things and 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 you think they would be useful um, to us, you know, uh, you know, I don't. In terms of the district, you, you you know, you probably do need to contact the central office, but they would probably be appreciative of your assistance because I think they can't take care of everything. So if you think there's materials that could. <laughs> I think we only have one from LAUSD right yeah. now. One. 27.7. Thank you. 27.7. Yes. Oh, it's. Yeah, we'd love more. Yes, we would. I think Paul has his hands full with uh, social emotional learning, though. Right. <laughs> so so maybe else. we need your help, Barry. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, so we're, I think we're at time, Lori, and yes. so let's just, um, let's just go through the remaining slides here, um, on the feedback. So when you go to the exchange, if you do have questions for the questions, if there's something on the exchange that you see that maybe, um, needs to be fixed or whatever, we do have this, um, website, we have this feedback, um, feature here. So just go ahead and click on that green feedback button. Um, it brings up a short form. You can add your comments. Those get sent to both, um, so those at the, uh, both CASAS and OTAN, and we'll try to respond to your questions or suggestions as quickly as possible. Um, Lori, do you want to finish up here? Just to say, you know, we've we've met our objectives. We've uh, you should hopefully you can identify the organization of the EL Civics website and identify the process for accessing and submitting them, and we hope that you will. And we, next slide, we, um, 
just, um, yeah, I think we can go to the next one. We just want to give you our email addresses. If you, if you um, aren't sure if your materials are accessible, if you want to submit them to, to myself, Lori, or Portia, um, before you actually upload them, we'd be happy to take a look and, and see how close they are to being accessible. Yeah. And Lori, I was going to say, actually, I did make a link to the slides as well. So let me just find that Thank link. You. Uh, let me remind myself what that link is. I think I can, I can, I might be able to drop the PowerPoint in the chat. Uh, I made a special a QR. So um, let me put it in the chat um, for folks. Okay, so we do have a bit.ly link. bit.ly slash capital T D L S 23 capital E L C. And that will take you to a uh, PDF version of the slides, um, has all the slides, the links, and um, also the contact information as well. Anthony, are they accessible? The slides? Yes. <laughs> accessible check around the PDF. So yes. I practice what I preach. <laughs> Okay, any final questions before we sign off for the day? Thank you. Okay, so yes, thank you so much everyone who attended in person here, everybody who attended online, Lori and Portia. Thanks everybody. Thank you.